I, I, I see that we are going to be doing this for a very long time because you, you just want to keep doing that. And how many times can I ask the judge to instruct you? Really? Next question. Judge, you move to strike. Next question. <laughs> I want an answer to your question. And I don't think it's funny, by the way. David Copperfield, arguably one of the greatest magicians of all time. known for many of his insane acts. But however, there is a rather sick and twisted side to Copperfield. In this video, we are going to go over exactly what he did to an innocent 15-year-old girl. David Copperfield, born David Seth Kotkin on September 16, 1956, in Metuchen, New Jersey, grew up in a middle-class Jewish family. His father, Hyman Kotkin, owned a men's haberdashery in Warren, New Jersey, while his mother, Rebecca Kotkin, was an insurance adjuster. Copperfield's early life was characterized by a fascination with magic and storytelling, which he later combined into his illustrious career. The real star tonight is a name that may be fairly new to magic, but you're going to be seeing a lot of it, and for a long time up there in big, bright lights. I refer to the fantastic the formidable, the entirely flabbergasting Mr. David Copperfield. The magic of David Copperfield. David was an only child and often found himself immersed in books and imaginative play. At a young age, he developed a profound interest in magic. I was a shy kid, Copperfield once recalled. Magic was my way of being special it was my way of being somebody. By the age of seven, David was already performing magic tricks for friends and family. His grandfather, who was a tailor, played a significant role in nurturing his early interest. He would show young David simple magic tricks, sparking his curiosity further. My grandfather was my first audience. He encouraged me, and I loved seeing his reactions. It made me want to learn more. At the age of 10, David began taking his magic more seriously. He joined the Society of American Magicians, becoming the youngest person ever admitted to the Society. This milestone was a testament to his burgeoning talent and dedication. Joining the Society of American Magicians was a big deal for me. I felt like I was part of a community that understood my passion, Copperfield reflected. David attended Metuchen High School, where his magic performances made him somewhat of a local celebrity. His teachers and peers recognized his talent and often supported his endeavors. One of his high school teachers once remarked, David was always different. While other kids were playing sports, he was perfecting his magic tricks. We all knew he was destined for something big. David Copperfield drew inspiration from many famous magicians, but none more so than Harry Houdini. He admired Houdini's showmanship and ability to captivate audiences. Houdini was my hero, David admitted. He wasn't just a magician, he was a storyteller. He made magic feel real, and that's what I wanted to do. At the age of 12, David adopted the stage name David Copperfield after the Charles Dickens novel of the same name. He felt the name carried a sense of mystery and wonder, which perfectly matched his aspirations. David Copperfield is a character who overcomes adversity and creates his own destiny. That resonated with me. I wanted to create my own magic and destiny. By his teenage years, Copperfield was already a seasoned performer. He spent his summers at the Catskills, a well-known resort area in New York, where he honed his craft by performing up to four shows a day. These performances were crucial in developing his stage presence and understanding audience engagement. Good evening. Tonight's show is going to be special. We have great guests who, in addition to being very talented as we know them, all have one very important thing in common. They love magic. Performing at the Catskills was like boot camp for entertainers, Copperfield said. I learned so much about timing, pacing, and connecting with the audience. It was an invaluable experience. During this time, David also began to innovate and develop his own tricks. His creativity and ambition were evident as he constantly sought to push the boundaries of traditional magic. I didn't want to just perform magic tricks. I wanted to create moments of wonder and disbelief. I wanted my audience to feel like they were experiencing something truly extraordinary. David Copperfield briefly attended Fordham University in New York City, but left after just three weeks to pursue his magic career full time. His big break came when he was cast in the lead role of the musical The Magic Man in Chicago. The show ran for over a year and became the longest-running musical in Chicago's history at that time. 
The magic man was a turning point for me, Copperfield noted. Tonight, I'm going to saw the male magician in half. You're gonna what? Oh, you're gonna love this, David. I do it lengthwise. Lengthwise? Yes, and you wanna know what else? No. You wanna hear the best part of all? No. I do it with a chainsaw. A chainsaw. It gave me the confidence and platform to showcase my unique style of magic. It was a blend of magic and theater, which was exactly what I wanted to do. Copperfield's early career was marked by a relentless drive to innovate and elevate the art of magic. He aimed to blend storytelling, theater, and illusion in a way that had never been done before. Magic, to me, is about creating an experience, he explained. It's not just about the trick, it's about the story, the emotions, and the memories you create for your audience. David's approach to magic was heavily influenced by his desire to connect with people on a deeper level. He wanted his performances to be more than just visual spectacles. He wanted them to be emotionally resonant and impactful. I always believed that magic should be an emotional journey, Copperfield said. I wanted my audience to laugh, cry, and be amazed. I wanted them to feel something. In his own words, magic is about dreams and possibilities. It's about believing in the impossible and making it real. That's what I've always strived to do. David Copperfield's rise to fame and his illustrious career are marked by numerous iconic moments that have left audiences spellbound around the world. His ability to blend storytelling with grand illusions has redefined the art of magic. Here, we delve into some of the most significant highlights of Copperfield's career, showcasing his ingenuity, creativity, and unrelenting pursuit of the extraordinary. One of the major turning points in David Copperfield's career was his television specials, which brought his magic into the homes of millions. Starting in 1977 with The Magic of ABC, Copperfield's specials quickly became an annual event. These shows featured some of his most famous illusions, each more spectacular than the last. I always wanted to make magic accessible to everyone, Copperfield once said. Television allowed me to reach a broader audience and create experiences that were larger than life. Perhaps one of the most iconic moments in Copperfield's career was his 1983 illusion in which he made the Statue of Liberty disappear. This feat, performed live on television, left audiences around the world in awe and cemented Copperfield's status as a master illusionist. The idea was to remind people how precious liberty is and how easily it can be lost, Copperfield explained. I wanted to do something that would not only astonish people, but also make them think. The illusion involved a complex setup with a giant curtain, lights, and a platform on Liberty Island. When the curtain dropped, the Statue of Liberty was gone, leaving only an empty skyline behind it. The stunt was so convincing that it led to widespread speculation about how it was done, but Copperfield never revealed his secrets. In 1986, Copperfield took on another seemingly impossible feat, walking through the Great Wall of China. This illusion required months of planning, and a deep understanding of the cultural significance of the wall. I wanted to do something that had never been done before, something that was truly impossible, Copperfield said. The Great Wall of China is a symbol of strength and endurance, and walking through it was a way to challenge those concepts. The illusion was performed live and involved Copperfield walking into one side of the wall and emerging from the other, seemingly passing through solid stone. The stunt captivated audiences worldwide and further solidified his reputation as a magician who could achieve the impossible. Copperfield's flying illusion, introduced in 1992, remains one of his most beloved and mesmerizing performances. In this act, Copperfield appeared to defy gravity soaring through the air with grace and fluidity. The illusion was so convincing that it led to numerous theories and speculations about how it was achieved. Flying is a universal dream, Copperfield remarked. I wanted to give people the sensation of what it would be like to actually fly, to experience that freedom and wonder. The flying illusion was notable not only for its execution, 
but also for its emotional impact. Copperfield often performed the trick to the song On Eagle's Wings, creating a poignant and moving experience for the audience. The technical aspects of the illusion involved a complex system of wires and harnesses, but the effect was seamless and magical. In 1995, Copperfield introduced The Death Saw, a dramatic and suspenseful illusion in which he appeared to be sawed in half by a giant circular saw. This act combined danger, precision and theatricality, making it one of his most thrilling performances. I wanted to push the boundaries of what people thought was possible, Copperfield said. The Death Saw was about creating tension and excitement and showing that magic can be both terrifying and beautiful. The illusion involved Copperfield being strapped to a table while a large saw blade descended upon him. At the last moment, he was seemingly cut in half, only to emerge unharmed moments later. The act was a masterclass in misdirection and showmanship, leaving audiences both horrified and amazed. In 2001, Copperfield unveiled Portal, an illusion that took the concept of teleportation to a new level. In this act, Copperfield and an audience member were transported from the stage to a remote location, seemingly instantaneously. The illusion was performed live and incorporated real-time video feeds to enhance its realism. Portal was about connecting people and places in a way that seemed magical, Copperfield explained. I wanted to show that distance and time are no barriers to the power of imagination. The logistics of Portal were incredibly complex, involving precise timing, advanced technology and meticulous planning. The result was a seamless and breathtaking experience that left audiences questioning the nature of reality. Beyond these specific acts, Copperfield's career has been marked by a series of mega illusions, each designed to outdo the last. These grand scale performances include making a Learjet disappear, escaping from Alcatraz and surviving Niagara Falls. Every new illusion is a challenge, Copperfield once said. It's about finding new ways to surprise and delight my audience and to keep pushing the boundaries of what magic can be. In addition to his performances, Copperfield has also been dedicated to using his talents for good. He founded Project Magic, a program that uses magic as a form of therapy for patients with physical and mental disabilities. The program has been adopted by hospitals around the world and has helped countless individuals improve their motor skills and self-esteem. Magic has the power to heal and inspire, Copperfield noted. Project Magic is about giving people hope and showing them that they can overcome their challenges. Copperfield's contributions to magic and entertainment have been widely recognized. He has received numerous awards, including 21 Emmy Awards for his television specials, and has been honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He was also named a living legend by the United States Library of Congress. Being recognized by my peers and by institutions like the Library of Congress is incredibly humbling, Copperfield said. It's a validation of the hard work and passion I've put into my craft. David Copperfield has also faced serious allegations and controversies that have cast a dark shadow over his career. These allegations, ranging from sexual misconduct to inappropriate behavior, have spanned several decades, causing significant damage to his reputation and career. Here we delve into these allegations and their impact on Copperfield's life and career, offering a comprehensive look at the challenges he has faced. In a detailed investigation by The Guardian US, 16 women accused David Copperfield of various forms of misconduct, including drugging, grooming, assault, and groping. These allegations span from the 1980s to 2014, with more than half of the women stating they were under the age of 18 at the time of the alleged incidents. Copperfield's lawyers have vehemently denied all allegations, insisting that he never, ever acted inappropriately with anyone, let alone anyone underage. A representative for Copperfield told Vulture, Everyone who knows David Copperfield will tell you that these recent allegations from one newspaper are the exact opposite of who David is, adding that Copperfield would consider legal action over what they described as false and scurrilous allegations. One of the most harrowing allegations came from a woman who claimed that Copperfield drugged her and her friend after inviting them to his room at Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas. She alleged that Copperfield had sex with them when they were unable to consent. This accusation added to an earlier claim by a model who accused Copperfield of drugging and assaulting her when she was 17, which Copperfield also denied. Multiple other women claimed they met Copperfield at his shows when they were under 18, 
and he continued to stay in touch with them afterward. One woman said Copperfield sent her a note reading, in two years I will be back, when she was 16. She later had sex with him when she turned 18 and began a relationship she described as consensual, but highlighted the huge power and financial imbalance between them. Some of Copperfield's former assistants also confirmed that he showed an interest in young women and would target them at shows. Other women, some underage, alleged that Copperfield groped them on stage while performing tricks. One such case involved Fallon Thornton, who filed a police report in Las Vegas in January 2014, claiming that Copperfield grabbed her breast on stage at the MGM Grand, where he continues to perform. Although the case was later dismissed for lack of evidence, Thornton told The Guardian, I don't think it was taken seriously. Copperfield has faced similar allegations in the past. In 2007, a woman named Lacey Carroll accused Copperfield of raping her on his private island. Copperfield accused Carroll of trying to extort him, and the FBI launched an investigation. The investigation, which involved raiding Copperfield's warehouse in Las Vegas, was eventually dropped in 2009 due to insufficient evidence. Throughout these controversies, Copperfield has consistently maintained his innocence. His lawyers have specifically denied several accusations to The Guardian, stating that all allegations are false and entirely without foundation. Copperfield himself has expressed distress over the accusations, asserting that they do not reflect his character or behavior. The allegations have undoubtedly impacted Copperfield's career and public image. Despite being one of the highest earning illusionists of all time, these controversies have marred his reputation. His performances, while still popular, are now viewed through the lens of these serious accusations. The media scrutiny and public perception have created a significant challenge for Copperfield, who has had to navigate these tumultuous waters while continuing his professional work. The legal battles and public allegations have taken a toll on Copperfield both personally and professionally. The repeated claims have led to numerous investigations, although none have resulted in formal charges or convictions. The lack of concrete evidence has led some to question the validity of the accusations, while others argue that the sheer number of allegations suggests a pattern of behaviour. Despite these allegations, Copperfield has continued to perform and innovate in his field. His resilience in the face of such serious accusations is notable, as he has managed to maintain a significant presence in the world of magic and entertainment. Copperfield's ability to separate his professional life from the personal allegations against him has allowed him to continue captivating audiences with his illusions. David Copperfield's career is not just about the magic he creates on stage, but also about the resilience he has shown in the face of adversity. His story is a reminder that even the brightest stars have their shadows, and it is their ability to navigate these challenges that truly defines their legacy. As Copperfield himself puts it, magic is about overcoming the impossible. It's about finding hope and wonder, even in the darkest times. That's what I strive to do, both on stage and in life.